Local support for today's News 6 has been provided by the Northwest Ohio Educational Technology Foundation, Bowling Green State University, and the members of WBGU-TV. Andrew Long from Elmwood Middle School. Welcome to News 6. With today's first story, here's Zach Bali. Popcorn is one of America's favorite snack, food, snack foods. Sixth graders eat tons of it every year. But have you ever wondered how it's made? News 6 reporter Chrissy Bells tracked down one of Ohio's finest popcorn producers to find out more about it. The potent popcorn business has been around for almost 100 years. We're here talking to Peggy Trier to find out the secret of its success. How do you produce your popcorn? Our method of producing our popcorn is based on a tradition of quality which was established in 1898 when the business was started. We begin by choosing our hybrid seed for its special flavor and texture. We then plant it in the fertile soils of Northwest Ohio in late April or early May. How do you harvest your popcorn? We pick the whole ear. Most other popcorn companies now shell the kernel off the ear in the field, but we bring the whole ear in to dry in our corn crib or our natural gas dryers in our plant. When the moisture of the kernel is just right, then we shell it. After it is shelled, it is cleaned and stored in our grain bins awaiting orders to be processed and packaged. How do you get your popcorn ready for packaging? We run our popcorn over a gravity separator to uh, separate out the lightweight material. We then run it over a sorter and clean it. It is then ready to be packaged. What popcorn products do you sell? We have two pound bags of yellow and white Hollis popcorn as well as 50 pound bags. We also have butter and natural flavor microwave popcorn. Our Pelton popcorn is used by school scouts and other groups for fundraising. Our Lake Plains popcorn is found in supermarkets. Most of our popcorn is sold in Ohio, Pennsylvania, New York, and New Jersey. And now back to the studio. Today's News 6 is produced by Elmwood Middle School, which is located in Signet, Ohio. Our town is situated 10 miles south of Bowling Green on Interstate 75 and has a population of 620. Signet was originally called Pleasant View, but was renamed Signet in 1889 when it was discovered that another town had already taken the name Pleasant View. Signet's only grocery store is Hudson's Market, which had had its belongings about a century ago. It's a family-owned business which has been passed down through three generations. News 6 reporters Jody Dick and Ashley Brooks took the 6th grade class to visit Hudson's Market and talk with the current owner, Bill Hudson. Mr. Hudson, how long has Hudson's Market been open for business? Gee, Jody has been here a long time. It started way back in around 1904. My grandfather started the business. He started with a horse and buggy and delivered groceries. I was the horse and buggy. And then he started a business in a building. Then it's moved to about four different buildings since he started. Then my dad took it over. And about 12 years ago, I took it over. So it's been here a long time. What kind of merchandise can you buy at the market? Well. You can buy just about anything you buy in any grocery store. Just kind of a little bit smaller level than some of your big stores. But you can buy your uh, basic necessities, you can buy your meats, you can buy your breads, you can buy your milk. Uh, you can buy just about anything. You can buy cards. Some of the new things we've put in, you can buy soft serve ice cream. You can rent videos. You can buy just about anything you would in any other, any other store. We're just a little bit smaller here. Okay. What are some of your most popular items? Probably the most popular item is the ice cream, because that's what all the kids like. How many people does it take to run Hudson's Market? Depends on the time of year. In the summertime, 
when the ice cream is running real good, it takes about 10 people to run it. Then in the winter time, we close down the ice cream, and then we run our basic store, and we can get by with about four or five people. Thank you, Mr. Hudson, for sharing Hudson's Market with News 6. Our next segment is the Kids' View Question, which asks the sixth graders of Elmer Middle School what career path they would choose as adults. Let's listen to what some of them said. This week's Kids' View Question is, what do you want to be when you grow up and why? I want to be an archaeologist when I grow up because I like rocks. I want to be a doctor when I grow up because I like to heal people. When I grow up, I want to be a football player because I like football. Have you ever dreamed about riding a horse? Well, at Sanderson Stables, that dream can become a reality. Children as young as six or seven can learn all about taking care of horses and how they ride them. News 6 reporter Rachel Sanderson has a story. Hi, I'm Rachel Sanderson here at Sanderson Stables in Signet, Ohio. I'm interviewing my mom, Carla, about horse riding. What kinds of things do you do here? We teach riding lessons, and we're mainly an educational program for Bowling Green State University, Lord's College, Owens, and Terra Tech. It's a one hour credit course for a phys ed class and we do the continuing ed classes for all the schools. We teach writing lessons and we work with the ground up approach. What do you mean by the ground up approach? Okay, that means that we work, we learn the safety of the horses and working around the horses we learn to tack up, which tacking up means to saddle and bridle the horses. We learn to groom the horses, and we learn, of course, to ride the horses. Is it difficult to learn how to ride? No, but some people learn quicker because they have to learn to balance in the center of the horse's back, so, and some people just naturally have that knack to balance themselves. Um, you always tack up a horse, which tacking means saddling up a horse. You do it on the left side. Everything's on the left side of the horse um, because of tradition. And because of that, we lead the horse on the left side, we saddle up on the left side, and we mount up on the left side. Now back to the studio. Thank you, Mrs. Sanderson, for talking with New Six about the stables. This week in Critics Corner, Elmwood Middle School chose Bull Run, written by Paul Fleshman. This is a historical fiction book about the first major clash of the Civil War. Bull Run is a comp composite of per perspectives of eight northern characters and eight southern characters. They tell what they saw and did prior to the battle, during the battle, and finally what their reactions were after the battle. Though throughout the book, the characters do not appear to be involved with one another. However, the author gives clues to the reader which in interconnect several of the characters. Read the book Bull Run by Paul Fleshman and see if you can find the connection. That's all for this week's show. Be sure to tune in next week for another sixth grade perspective about people and places in Northwest Ohio. Local support for today's News 6 has been provided by the Northwest Ohio Educational Technology Foundation, Bowling Green State University, and the members of WBGU-TV.